Kiss European race tonight here on Swift Community Live. My name is Jess Brenker, and as always, I will be your host. I see already in the chat the Gavin Richardsons, the CERN Bays, the Gavin Arbors. Thank you so much for keeping me company. So you may have seen last week's race. So last week was the first time in a very long time I was asked to commentate on a Kiss European race, and it was honestly so much fun. Like it was honestly some of the most fun I've had commentating on Swift racing in quite a while. So I asked Nathan if I can come back and do it again tonight here on a Thursday eve here on a Thursday evening in your great company. So thank you so much for the great racing. Today we've got an interesting race course on our hands. We're gonna be racing the Everything Bagel course. Last week it was the six train reverse, I believe. That's quite like a crit, but tonight on the Everything Bagel course. That is going to be difficult. That is nothing like a crit. It's going to be up or it's going to be down. And already, I believe, about seven kilometers into the racing tonight, they're going to hit the reverse KOM, which they go up that rainbow road onto the... Is it translucent? Transparent? Where the opacity is turned down to like 30% on the roads and you can see down? That's going to be interesting to see who is going to break it or make it on that hill. I did... I did speak earlier to James Phillips, who won last week in the Kiss European race and had had the bragging rights for an entire week. He's actually out tonight with an injury because, yeah, he decided to try something that no Swifter should all should never try. He went and out and did cycle cross. So he came into the finishing straight, and as he was about to sprint, one of his feet unclipped. And as you can imagine, on a cycle cross course, when you go to sprint and your feet unclip, you lose balance. And then he went head over first, I believe. And he broke his fibula and he broke his collarbone, which means, fortunately, the James Phillips of Innovation Cycling will not be here tonight. And here we go. So the racing is off. It's time to look at who's made the start list. We've already got Stephen Fleetwood of my old team. Vision is out on course out of the UK. So if you never watched a Swift race before, you're in for a treat because this is some of the premier racing you can get within the universe of Swift. It's on the course called New York City. It's called New York City because it's the real life course set in a very distant utopian future of like 2090 or I don't think Greg Leo ever actually got the uh, correct answer to what time it was set in, but we're off to a start. I already see Igor Corpses in here. Igor Corpse, this man is controversial on wheels. He is powerful. He is not a man you want to take to a sprint finish. I believe he has been up there in the UCI Grand Fonda World Championships, but there is also some other history floating around. He was also competing in the CVR World Cup, where he unfortunately had to decline the invitation, I believe, to the finale due to set circumstances. But he's in here tonight, so if you see Igor Corpse, try your best to drop him before the sprint, because that man has just got raw power packed into those legs. Mason Butler's in here, one of the youngest contesters of tonight, racing out of the United States of America. One of the few guys to be under 23 years of age. Let's give him a ride on. We got, is that Rick Woods in here? Oh, no, I don't think that's Rick Woods. That's a different Woods of innovation cycling as well. Got Bergen out of Norway. He raced last week. Freddy van der Ploeg of, of Netherlands have made it in here. Oh, Søren Bay. Oh, I know he's listening. The stories you can tell with Søren Bay. So Søren Bay has made it to a live event before. I believe it was Los Angeles where he showed up with his great wife. So he showed up and he started racing and he just started overheating. And as a Dane, I can kind of relate to this. It's like we're known for poor weather conditions and swifting in like our, well, literally our pain cave where the weather is a bit nicer, where it's not as warm. But he went into Los Angeles, into this velodrome, and he just could not take the room temperature, the moistness in the air. He just, the humidity, he could not deal with it. So what he did the second day of racing with his wife is he had two jer uh, two jerseys with him. One, he would dip into cold water and pour on himself. Then once that was heated up, he then took it off, gave it to his wife, who then dipped it down into cold water again and gave it back to him. And on top of that, I believe there was also like sock stopping. So we're, I don't, I'm not sure what they're called in English, but you know, the thing that ladies wear, he was like <laughs> filling that up with ice and pouring it down his back as well. So Saren Bay, great racer. He's the Danish national champion of Swift. And this should be a course that should suit him. So we'll see how he does. As always, <coughs> excuse me. Yesterday I was at an event, a Swift event, oh sorry, a Wahoo Swift event in London and uh, I may have a tiny bit lost my voice. But we're heading up now, we're heading up a climb, 8%, this is the reverse KOM. I spoke to my good friend and colleague Victor Lundquist who's raced this course twice. What is the secret to the reverse KOM? And it's simply just to hang on until the very end because it gets steeper at the very end. So 
you simply just want to do your very, very best to hang with the front of the affairs and then try to make it because there is a bit of respite. As you see now, it's already coming down to about 4 or 3%. <coughs> Sorry, still recovering. <coughs> I do have a cup of coffee here with me tonight, so I did come prepared. But we got David Williams on the front. We saw last week, every single time we came up the torture, dubbed by Ryan Goldenberg of Canada, it was always David Williams from the front, and he's sitting there now at 8.5 watts per kilo, 9 watts per kilo. Bergen is with him. It is 6-7%. I believe the last 400 meters is at 10%, according to Victor Lundqvist. So we'll have to take him up on his math. He's usually one who's not, not wrong when it comes to geographical knowledge. I see in the chat... What is happening here in the chat now? See, Jacob Peel is in here. Who's, I believe he's won a Tour de France stage for Team CSC back in the days. Now races for Team X out on course. We also see Kim Little. And we got Casey Shum in here. Thank you so much for tuning in. But while that's happening, we've got a two-man breakaway off the front. It's got Bergen and Whiteley. No stranger is Mr. Whiteley to Swift Racing. Qualified, Phil Whiteley qualified for the Swift E-Crit in London. We all know the story. He accidentally sculpted himself in the knee. He still showed up. He still put on a great performance. He races for the Bolt Racing team. And now him and Bergen the Viking have gone off the front with Mason Butler not too far behind. We are racing on double draft tonight. That's aero power-ups. Like, this is what's happening tonight. You always save your aero power-up for the end. But tonight, we saw Daffy Williams popping his power-up. We're seeing three other riders, four other riders, popping their aero power-ups already now. This is early on. But they do get at least three chances, I believe, to get another power-up on this course. But if you look in the top left-hand corner for Talbot of ODC, his heart rate is at 183, 184. Bergen is really putting on the pressure. This this is the Viking pillaging the peloton now. He wants to get rid of all that dead weight. All the sprinters, the Igor corpses, the CERN base, the guys, the Gavin Arbors, the guys that have got high peak power. He's trying to get rid of them. But while that was happening, what I was trying to explain is that tonight we are racing with double draft, true draft, 2.0 draft, full draft. Not sure it's had a patent yet approved, so the name is still pending. But we're racing with double draft, which means when we're on the flat, it is easier to rest. Meaning when we go uphill, you can go so much harder. And now we are on that final stretch almost, I believe, as Talbot is going to the front now. This is going to be an amazing time from the races here in the KISS European race tonight. This is ODC back in the front. And you can really tell with the weight to watts or weight, watts to weight ratio, watts per kilo ratio, it really favors the lighter riders. So we got the Talbers, the Bengen, the Butlers, even the Gavin Dempsters are up here. But as soon as it flattens back out, it is the absolute watts that matter. The weight, and here they go. They're coming over the very top as we actually went to the D riders there for a second. That is my apology. I misclicked. Let's see if we can get back to the front now. This That was a very unfortunate misclick that somehow brought it back up. Come on. Someone get back to the front. We got Arison, Salmonson, Daffy Williams, who's just off the back. Gavin Arbor. We're back in. Quick mechanical. We're at the very top. We're going to see what time it's going to be. The D riders <laughs> did a little bit of a playing around with the broadcasting tools that are currently not available. Swift, come on. But Gavin Dempster of Scotland is second place with Talbert. Eight seconds off the road. 2.11 from Jonah Grafdahl was the prediction. A 2.18. That is a blazing time. That is aero power-ups everywhere over the top. But Gavin Dempster sitting in last week. I've, like Last week's competitivity award, Pedal de Charme, Gavin Dempster. Up against Team Poland. Up against Team Innovation. And Gavin Dempster just kept attacking, kept attacking. Coming into the sprint finish, Gavin Dempster attacked to try and break the dangerous duo that is... James Phillips and Steve Young, the dangerous pythons. But Gavin Dempster, in the end, got caught, finished well. It was great to see Innovation pull that one off. So David Talbert, I believe it's David, is off the front. So 10 seconds off the front. It is very difficult to stay away, though, because the way the Swift algorithm works in racing is that you need to maintain, like, 6, 5.5 watts per kilo. On the descent, I think that time gap is slowly going to reel back in, and he's going to have to give it another go now on the next time. So... Everything bagel course is they go up this climb, if you haven't seen it before, they do the reverse KOM, they come down, they go inside Central Park, they do a, a few laps, or I think a lap, a big lap, and then you come back and they do the forward KOM, which is pretty much identical to this, just a bit tougher. So the reverse KOM is longer, but less steep, whereas the forward KOM 
is short and just straight to the punch. So Talbot has already proven that he can go fast up the hill, but we're only seven minutes into the race. He's just been brought back by the peloton. He's going to have to do that again. The big question I want to hear, though, is that, guys, I've never, I haven't, this is my first race watching on the Everything Bagel course, as we have a split. We've got a leading group and then a peloton led on by Gavin Richardson, Arbor. Actually, it's not so much a, a, a chasing group. It's more of a chasing individuals who seem to have been spat off the back and they're going to have to struggle to get back in, but it is definitely possible. But this is my first time watching an Everything Bagel race. I know Nathan Guerra have done it before, I believe, because he was hyping this up to me, saying this is going to be a great course and you're lucky tonight, Jesper. I want you in the chat right now to tell me who's going to take this victory. Is it going to be a hillier climber, a lighter climber, a mountain goat? Or are we going to see a sprinter like Igor Corpse somehow take this out and stay with the front group to the very end and then explode towards the finish line? Because I will be blown, like, I'll be blunt with you. I haven't seen a race on the Everything Bagel course. This is my first race I'm commentating on this specific course. So I'm in it with you guys. What do you think? I'm, I'm all ears. I'm listening. As always, when I do... The Australian races down under in the E-crits, the chops. I have the pleasure of having Wesley Salzberger and Pat Shaw by my side. But when we do these European races, it is usually me and Nathan Guerra flying solo with the rare occasion of Greg Leo, one of the community head leaders of Swift Racing, showing up to help out with a co-commentary. But in my case, you are my trusty sidekick. You are my Robin to the Batman. I, I thank you very much. I see Yeva Talbos in there saying it is a brutal course. I'll take your word for it. And three Porsches in here. Quintamonis is saying the next half is tough because it's pretty much two efforts. So, yeah, with this course with New York, is always up and down. I saw we had just over 100 viewers as we hit the top of the reverse climb. If you can stick around, you can now see the riders trying to settle back in, recover. You can see Cern base heart rate is 135. He's definitely in optimal conditions back in his pain cave. I, I gotta admit, having uh, the Danish flag is called Denable, which is really nice to see on the back of Cern Bay of Team Experimental. He is flying that flag quite loudly tonight, and I do expect a great result for my good friend. But on the front, Bergen again, not happy with the pacing. It's going to be interesting to see what happens now. Who does the pacing on the front? There's no there's no dominance from one team in the front. I couldn't really spot a numerical advantage for anyone in this front group, which means now you're going to have to start looking around. You have to start playing cat and mouse, saying, if you're not working, I'm not working, which could uh, spark attacks. And with this double draft feature, it's going to be interesting to see. I see Nathan Guerra sending me a message saying there might be a bit of a lag. I don't think I've got too much open, Nathan. I've got nothing. It's just... This is what I've got open right now. Might be something we can look at afterwards, Nathan, if you've got the time. But with the new true draft system in place, it'll be interesting to see because if you can get into a breakaway of three to four, suddenly you are your own blob. Because in the past, before true draft, blob was defined by like 10 to 15 to 20. And with the new effect, it looks like the blob is almost defined by three to four. Like there was a meme floating around the Swift Races forum where it's like two riders, ah, you doomed three riders suddenly you're a massive truck so we'll see <laughs> we'll see how this one pans out there was a question in the chat that caught my eye for a second Larit Urlif said Jasper do you think that with everything going on with CVR it will affect racing on Swift and while we've got a tiny bit of downtown downtime I think that is a valid question to ask because there's been so much commotion going on now with CVR making their announcement that they're going to a different platform will CVR racing affect Swift racing I don't know man like honestly my guess is a good is a, as good as yours because Nothing has ever happened like this in the Swift world. Like, I've been in the Swift racing world since it started with Nathan Guerra back when it was three, two, one, go in the chat and go. But with this massive announcement, this massive bombshell from CV Arcade, honestly, who knows what's going to happen, guys? So just, just enjoy the fact that something new is coming out and it might be of interest and, like... Anything is good. I, I don't see how this would have a negative impact on Swift Racing. I think it would only make Swift Racing better and more competitive. And as we say that, there is a bump in the road now. 5%, 4%, 6% with Talbot again. Talbot wants to win this bad. Like, he is doing it for the ODC boys and girls. Tonight, he is really the one laying down the power. He's in the role of Gavin Dempster. I see Simon Schofield is tuning in. Let us know if you're watching from your new home in Girona or back home. I was... Over by your way with Leeds and Alba Rosa the other day. It's quite quite a nice place to be. 
Nathan Guerra, who uh, is not commentating tonight, but he's definitely pulling his fair share of the co-commentator role in the chat, is saying, Dempster is the favorite in my mind, but who is the upset? That is interesting to see that you think Gavin Dempster is the favorite, because we know he's strong, but... There is just, he's, he, he lacks that kick. He had it at the e finale in London, but at home, there just seems to be stronger riders all along, or all around him in the peloton. So if it did come to a scenario where Gavin Dempster could win, there's just an upgraded Gavin Dempster just around the corner. I mean, that sounds really mean and harsh, and I don't mean, I don't mean to make it sound like that. But Gavin is just so overall good that he's lacking that one piece of like speciality that we can just say that is Gavin Dempster. He's just a bit of a, a workhorse. He just he doesn't mind putting in the bu- uh, big miles as his race across Scotland proved the other month, about six months ago. So, yeah, we got Dave Ranson. I've met him. He's a nice guy. Says, less Jeff for the win. James Phillips thinks Bay or Corpus will be up there. Yeah, I, I got to say, I've got a really keen eye to Cern Bay tonight. He's he's the kind of racer that if he races, he gives everything. He races with a heart. So he's definitely going to be up there. Definite top three, top five contender if it all works out. Gavin has the DD sprint dialed. Well, that's good news. I assume you're meaning Gavin Dempster, not Gavin Richardson. If so, good on you, Gavin Richardson. So now we're in, we're in Richmond, we're, not Richmond, we're in New York City Park, Central Park. We're going to go in here, we're going to ride the new course, we can change the camera angle up to here, so we're in the peloton, and then in about, I think it's about 10 kilometers time, we're going to hit the second climb, the second and last climb of the day, where all the fireworks is going to happen, but in the meanwhile, everyone is kind of jerking like jockeying for position at the front looking around being a bit antsy i mean it's by no means slow at this point if you look at the right hand side of the screen you can still see cern bay is doing five watts per kilo gavin richardson is doing four and a half despite double draft being activated in this race everyone is still sitting at fours four and a half fives and that's due to the undulating terrain if it's not going up it's going down it means you have to really be on your a game keep your eye on the screen like This new course, this new New York extension has made racing a bit more engaging, a bit more immersive because with the rolling terrain, you have to have your eyes on the screen at all times. On Watopia, on Innsbruck, on London, there is a tendency, even on Richmond, that you could theoretically time it out like... You could close down Swift and then like race on like with Netflix on the screen, but on New York, it's that it doesn't really seem to be the case. Not that I've ever known anyone to do that. That was an over exaggeration to make my point, but you know what I mean. The new New York course, with the feedback I've seen, it's really changed the way racing works on Swift, and that's just from a like topographical standpoint. Just by having the course being up and down, up and down, and trying to have as as little flats as possible, little downtown as possible. Matt Gardner saying, Matt Brandt, I have candy. Well, that's interesting. Lee Robinson says, I've put my Xbox controller down to watch the race, hoping for a mass sprint finish. Well, we're heading there right now, Lee Robinson, if this is the race that's going to be on our hands. Mason Butler is now taken up in the front, though. He's even popping a featherweight at this point in the race. So I don't think I've mentioned this, but the Everything Bagel course is 34 kilometers long. You can see in the top, they've done about 12 kilometers so far, 222 meters of elevation. So they're not even halfway through the race yet. And Mason Butler went on to the attack again. One of the sole representatives of that American flag, the Stars and Stripes. So he's gone on to the attack. Then we also see Henry's in here. So Team Draft do have two riders tonight. This is... I'm spotting a tendency for Team Draft. They usually show up to every race with at least two riders. The last race I commentated was... Swift Riders Germany last Tuesday where they had Scott Cunningham and Leandro Messinio in that Richmond race where they set up the win quite nicely for Leandro Messinio for a solo breakaway. So what's going to happen now is the question because there is there is a bit of like like everyone kind of looking around thinking, okay, don't let a breakaway go away. Just don't let a break go. Just don't let the break go off the front. And other than that, we're set. We just have to survive, survive, hang on, do as little work as possible, and get ready for that climb for the forward KOM. But if you are 
a climber, you really want to make it as difficult as possible until that point because you want all the sprinters, you want the CERN base, the Igor courses to really struggle now within this peloton. You do not want them to rest up and get that lactic acid out of the legs. You want them to suffer, you want them to hurt, you want them to think mentally that they're not going to make it to that hill. And that is what Henry's doing now for Gavin Dempster. So Henry's on the front at 7 watts per kilo, putting up the pace. Is anyone going to go with him? He, qu he hasn't quite broken that gap just yet, the drafting barrier. Mason Butler's looking to go with him, Talbert. So it is the usual suspects tonight that seems to be appearing again and again and again with Mason Butler, Ta uh, Talbert, and Henry. And they do have a three-man break. Oh, there's even an arrow power being popped. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a serious move from Talbert and ODC. Or was that just the fact that there's a sprint banner right there and he's hoping to get another arrow power up? If that's the case, that is an interesting move. Leandro Messino says today wins Jason Henry. So Leandro Messino is Jason Henry's teammate at Team Draft, but Leandro is known as the strongest and best racer on Swift right now. So we should take his words for what it is. He's, he knows what he's doing. So if he says that uh, it's going to be Mr. Jason Henry, we'll see. Good call. We're going to keep a, a keen eye on him as he floats back into the peloton after his attack on the front. You'd think, you would think it'd be easier now. You'd think everyone would be looking around. But what happens in these A races, at least from looking at it in this race, is the easier it gets, the more antsy get, people get. So they get ready to attack off the front. So as soon as everyone starts feeling the pace come down, someone will attack. And like the premier riders that do this are the Adam Webbs, the James Hodges. I mean, even in this race, we're seeing Talbert, Bergen, and Henry doing it as well. As soon as they feel like the pace is at a comfortable level, they know that everyone else is feeling the same thing, so they feel the need to instigate it. And if this is the case, if you can confirm or deny this, because I will admit, my FTP has only ever peaked at like 4.1, and it's currently at like 3.7 or 3.8. Yes, I have been slacking. But if you are one of the premier races, I see Gemma Anchors is in the chat. Uh, she uh, she knows Kim Little quite well, so if Kim Little is also watching, you could confirm or deny that that's the case. That once it gets comfortable, once it gets easy in the pack, there's always that one guy who attacks off the front. So as I mentioned earlier, as we're heading down into the torture, I believe, or near that area, I do have my trusty cycling hub mug with me here, filled up with coffee, and it's roughly eight twenty in the UK, and yes, I'm having a coffee because it's been that kind of day. So I am now gonna take a, a swig of this coffee, and I think you should do the same. So I see there's a few people who's brought snacks tonight, a few people that brought candy, etc. It is Halloween, so you are allowed to do it. If you've got yourself a beverage, uh, mineral water or something stronger, feel free to take a swig of your bottle as well. We can have a synchronized little sip of whatever you're drinking, even if you're racing. If you were a CERN Bay, Phil Whiteley, Gavin Richardson, you're listening in, have a sip of your water, Remember to hydrate. You got to treat yourself, as the Cycling Hub boys would say. So I'm just going to have a quick swip of this coffee, and I'll see you in about five seconds. That does do wonders for the voice, for the throat. Here's a tip. If you go to a Swift event, tell whoever is the MC, whether it's Nathan Guerra, me, Matt Stevens, Dave Towley, to uh, rest their voice. There's always the Kiss European race on a Thursday evening. That's where you got to peak. Not the Swift event. Not the Swift event. So now we're coming up to the torture. The torture, as Ryan Goldenberg has dubbed it. You can see the Kiss arch out there. Last week, this is where the finish line was. Innovation Cycling with... Mr. Stevie Young and James Phillips really timed that to perfection. Of course, James Phillips is out of action tonight with a broken fibula and a broken collarbone. Sent me a picture earlier today showing his new cask. Not very good. Casey Shum says, I need a beverage, maybe even a DD beverage. Matt Gardner says, cheers, Jess Branker. Cheers to you as well, Matt. Do you, I do hope you qualify for the next CVR World Cup, wherever it is in the world, Matt, because... What we did in LA, how we had the dynamic of like you racing and me coaching or whatever it was. I wouldn't classify it as coaching. Motivational support. That is one of my personal highlights in Swift racing world. So um, like from all of me, thank you so much, Matt. That was, thank you for letting me help you. Even though I'm not sure how much I actually helped you were at the one doing the what's and everything. But now, 34 kilometers of racing left. In about a kilometer's time, we're going to be halfway they're making their way back now. They've circled through 
New York Central Park. They've seen all the sights, the squirrels, the scuddies, the lampposts. Oh my God, the lampposts. They've seen the lampposts. So now they're heading back on the straight. And Dave Talbert, I believe that's Dave. If it's not, someone should really correct me because for now I'm sticking with Dave until I can have swift power open. But Dave Talbert of ODC has gone off the front again at 7 watts per kilo, just trying to break things up in proper, proper ODC fashion. They're just doing everything now to try and go off the front. Jess was probably just annoying Matt so much that he got angry and gained watts. It was coaching. Screaming counts as coaching. <laughs> Basically, I made a career on screaming, Matt, so you're welcome. I got I to gotta give it to Talbert, though. If we had a price for most competitivity, uh, for most competitive rider, the most aggressive, it would definitely be Talbert so far, unless someone else could tip that attack over the top. So I'm, I didn't quite catch all the predictions of riders that you thought was going to win. I've seen Cern Bay. I've seen Gavin Dempster. Who else do you think could be up there towards the front? Could it be a Talbert? Could he really stay away? He's got a chance here to uh, gain more and more before the climb. We saw him be up there as one of the top three guys on the reverse climb. And his gap is going out 12, 13 seconds to Mason Butler. is not quite bad. Oh, I confirmed it, David Talbert. Ah, uh, 10 out of 10 guessing game. Jesper, you should have heard Tim Fulford. Oh, you can get loud. It's It runs in the cycling hub world. It's the uh, essence of hype that just runs through the company's water system. I still, I just keep seeing Igor Corps in here, and I can't see anyone, speaking of predictions, being Igor Corps. I know how much of a machine he is. Basically, for the entirety of last season of CVR World Cup, I spent every Tuesday just watching Igor Corps stream in the morning. It was the most entertaining Swift stream you'll ever watch. More entertaining than a Jesper Anchor Pain Cave streaming. More entertaining than a Jesper race broadcast of KISS European broadcast. Seeing Igor Corps sprint like he's the Hulk. Oh my goodness. I love you, Igor. I want you to win this quite badly. Matt Brandt, who's another top fan of Swift Community Live, thank you for everything you do, man. Being around the comments, messaging, everything, it really matters a lot to the community. Says, rule number one of Swift Racing, don't let Talbert get a gap in a Healy race. So what is the gap up to now to Talbert? Oh yeah, it's 10 seconds. But you can see the difference in the blob effect. Talbert is pushing 6 watts per kilo, while Mason Butler is pushing 4, who is currently leading the peloton. And Talbert is going all in. He's popped the aero power up now to go back off the front. You can see the avatar. He's got the Simon Geschke beard. But he's gone all in on this move as he's now over halfway to the front, or to the, or to the race finish now. Going downhill, and you can see in the map, top right-hand corner, they're going to go up again this, this gradient, this long, steep ramp. And they're going to slowly make their way to the forward KOM. What's going to happen now? So Dave Talbert, 16 seconds, 17 seconds. Casey Shum says he thinks the Peloton is going to catch up a tiny bit on this descent. That could be the case. Actually, is this the forward KOM? This could be. I could be mistaken. This could actually be the KOM coming up here. I will admit I am very uninitiated when it comes to the everything bagel course because what I do on Swift is I do flat racing. I do flat courses. So, yes, we're hitting a, quite the, the kicker here. Now, by looking at the course in the top right-hand corner, this could be the forward KOM. So, I will bite the bullet on that one and admit defeat. I should probably have raced the everything bagel course so Valdemar of Poland is up here Bergen widely when are we going to see an attack from somebody back here on this climb five percent four percent it's not the come well then I was correct thank you Dave thank you I should always trust my gut instinct but it did look like a bit of a kicker a bit of a hill so Dave Talbert five five and a half percent this could almost be a calm you know this is this I, we should have a petition we should do a change.org you know how everyone got behind Shane Miller when his channel got unrightfully taken down by YouTube we should get behind we should set up a change.org petition to make this a calm call it Jesper Anchor's mistaken calm on New York City like that's a catchy name put that on a t-shirt make it a sticker put it on your bike and there you go. <laughs> oh, Dave. Love you too, man. Dreesen of Netherlands is on the front. He's a rocking that swift kit. What bike has he got? That is a Canyon Aero Road, I believe it is, with the wheels on there as well. Sip uh, 202s. He's up there. We got Cern Bay, Gavin Richardson, Innovation. He has been the workhorse for Innovation last week, and today is his time to shine. Here, he's go. Here he goes. Come on, Gavin. Come on. Do it for the boys in Newcastle. So Igor Corpse is near the front. Dave Talbot has still got eight seconds. We got Wood from Innovation on there as well from 
Actually, it might be from Kiss Racing, actually, who's on the front. Uh, Jeff Atalbus calls it the anchor cum. Oh, that's cute. Mason Butler still up here looking around. Les Vegan. Trzynski of Team Poland. Still one of the, my favorite kits in Swift because I get that bird wrong every time. Yeah. Dan Votonia lets me know when I see him. He's like, yeah, we never forget. Pol- uh, no, we don't forget in Poland, Jess, but we never forgive you. Of course, Dan Votonia works as the Swift Polish Polish country manager, I believe, Votonia, who set up, was one of the co-founders of Swift Poland Racing. So good friend, good guy. Excellent guy doing what he, what he does for his job. Knows everybody in the cycling industry over there. So shout out to my friend, Batonya. Dave Talbert. David Talbert now again. Nine watts per kilo. Another kicker. 10%. He really knows how to game the game of Swift. Because every incline, every little percentage where it goes up, that's where you make or break your time. That's where you make or gain time. And you can see Talbert increasing it every time it goes up a hill. Up to about 10 watts per kilo. Just to get over the top and then settle back in. It's a bit like... Like the Lake District, Lake District where we live, you really just have to sprint to the top and then try to level it out. And that way you'll get more time. And yeah. Dave Talbot says, Lord, Lord, have mercy. It's not going quite well for him. Larry says, Talbot looks like the strongest climber in this one, so he's my pick. Are you not concerned he spent too much energy? I mean, Talbot is looking really strong, but we know the climbers are in this peloton now with... Henry with Dempster, with Butler was in here as well. Bergen out of Norway is in here. I mean, they are, they're strong as well, and they've been saving their matches. I mean, if you open up Talbert's matchbook right now, it'd be halfway to not three quarters empty. So it'll be interesting to see once we hit this forward KOM if I know where it is. But we're in the sky, everybody. New York City has never looked so pretty before. This is what you can expect a thousand years from now or however long into the future this is. You go up into the sky, you can race against horse carriages that are in the sky, and you'll see random Swifters in New York City. I'm, I'm, I'm not even sure, would you be annoyed at that if you just saw Swifting people like virtual reality? Anyway, Casey Shum says, hashtag cooked, and I assume he is referencing that of David Talbot of the front. I would assume the same thing. If we look at it realistically, he should be getting tired now. He's been sitting at five and a half watts per kilo for quite a while now, and even the strongest people get tired. Swift racing and cycling, the reason I think most of us love cycling is the strategic aspect of it as well. Like, it's not always the strongest racer that wins. It's not always Leandro Messino that wins a Swift race, because at the end of the day, it comes down to how many matches you have and how you spend them. If you spend it just right, if you're playing poker and you gamble just right. You you know you got good cards, but you may not have the best. But if you can manage to convince everybody else that you do, well, then you're going to win. Unless, of course, you come to a showdown and you're going to lose everything. So there's a bit of a, a bit of an analogy in there somewhere. Larry says, I've got to root for my fellow American climbers. Well, there you go. A bit of nationalism. Come on, Talbert. Do it for the Americans. Roy Santos says he thinks he's humankind will be here in a thousand years. Yeah, here's hoping, Roy. Here's hoping that... Our grand, 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 and so on. Children will still be here on this great planet Earth. Mason Bottler sitting at 168 beats per minute. Knowing he's under 23 years of age, I think he'd be able to go to about 200 beats, just under maybe 195. That should mean he's got 20 beats to work with. So another another fellow American, if you want someone to cheer for, alert. Got Mr. Mason Butler. So we're still still up in the sky. There's not really much to see, like, scenic-wise. Like, yes, it's amazing, it's beautiful, but it's very flat. Like, I'm looking at it thinking I have to, like, almost look down, but for to, to do that, we have to do this. But now we're really immersed. It almost looks like a metro, like the, uh, like the overground in New York. Like, you know the tram lines? That's kind of what this reminds me of. Jamie Woodward is watching. Thank you so much for tuning in, and so is Noel McGeever. Thank you also very much for tuning in. Now... It's just the calm before the storm, really. They're waiting to catch Dave Talbert. we got 110 viewers in here now waiting for the forward KOM. We had a mass thin out as we hit the reverse KOM. We went from about 60 riders down to 20 riders that can win it. So now we're going to hit the, the forward KOM, and we're going to see who's going to take this one. I have a sneaky suspicion it's going to be a fast time from the draft boys. I mean, Gavin Dempster and Henry are going to go at it. But there's an attack off the front now. Let's see. Who is this? Is it Gavin Dempster who's gone on to the attack? It looks like he accelerated for a tiny bit there to see who, who else was ready for it. But it's Mason Butler. Mason Butler, as they make the catch in the American, David Talbert. Mason Butler has gone on to the counterattack. 
And he's popped his drafting power up to do this. And Henry goes as well. This is an arrow. This could be the move. Wood is going with it. This is a big attack. Using that drafting power up to the full advantage. And so with the arrow power up. Henry's going to go just around him now. Can Mason get back onto the wheel? They need to have a group of at least three riders to have a chance, I think. But Henry disagrees. Seven watts per kilo. The, you can see the percentages are going up now. Seven, eight. The cadence is coming down. Henry of team draft. Someone did say, actually I think it was Leandro Messina who said Henry's going to win this let's see what he can do that attack, popped an arrow power up and all he gained was 4 seconds but now, now is the time where the elastic might either make it or break it now, this is where it's so stretched out that just the right move and it snaps if not, it comes back so we're going to see, he's coming out now 3, 4 seconds, they turn left here I think this is the KOM. I recognize this. Now, this is the calm. This is the tough, tough climb that just has two very steep sections and straight into it. It's 15%, ladies and gentlemen. Get ready. This is, with 10 kilometers to go, the deciding point on the course. Igor Korps, one of the heavier riders, he weighs about 85 kilos up near the front. This is going to hurt so much. Team Poland, Gabryszak. I totally butcher that, but he's gone up there with Valdemar, Igor Corpse. We've got a strong 3-0 towards the front with Gavin Dempster not too far off. It is 13%. This is such a long climb, and you really want to just do your best to try and hang in there because it does flatten out just about here, and this is where Gavin Dempster has accelerated. He's trying to break the draft. Funny enough, as his team name is Draft. So he's going on to the attack. Come on, Gavin. We know you can do this. you got nine kilometers to go. It's going to kick up again now. He's sitting at 300 watts, 180 beats per minute. He's looking really, really good now. Kicks up again to 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. If you want to kick or climb right now, you'll be looking sky high. If you're on a smart trainer, you'll also feel the resistance kick in. You're going to almost be, if not, in the small ring right now with the resistance up towards the front. <laughs> good luck, good job, Jess, but you finally got the come right. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Still at 10%. Come on, Gavin. Back in the peloton, there are some riders who are struggling. This is where you really got to be using some of your matches to try and stick in there. It does get easier before you get very, very tough towards the front towards the top. They're halfway up the climb already and Gavin Dempster is slowly, slowly going away towards the front. You can feel the pain in Cern Bay. He's sitting at 74 RPM using that Neo. Mason Butler is up there. Gavin Richardson, Phil Widely, Dave Talbert is paying for his as before and so is our rider from Team Poland. Cern Bay is losing the draft. He's not going to win it today. He's not going to come back. This is halfway towards the top now. It gets easier then it kicks up again, I believe. So Gavin Dempster He's got Igor Kors behind him, but Gav knows this. He does not want him to come back. Kim Lillis is bay all day long. CERN is just being patient, says Casey Shum. It's 10 seconds now. It's 10 seconds. Are you still staying by that? CERN Bay catching back on. He's using the draft. He's got two Poland riders in there with wood as well. This could, this could be clever. I mean, I could be wrong here. Team X seems to have a strategy on this course. Now, if you look ahead, you can see it kicks up again as we're on board with our GoPro footage of Cern Bay, the Danish national champion of Team X. His teammates, Casey Shum and Kim Lillo and Jacob Peel are all behind him. They can see the top. It kicks up again now. This is the tough part. Gavin Dempster is at 8.5 watts per kilo. 16%. Just feel the lactic acid. Igor Korps, though, has really surprised me. He's really done really done well so far to get to the top as he's riding that canyon arrow with the sip 202s so actually i think that's sip 404s he's gonna get back on but now there's a long descent coming off to this who's gonna get back on who's gonna make a mini peloton he's really going for it, gavin dempster now on the front What's going to happen now? Back in this peloton, there's ones and ones and ones, and it's going to take them a few seconds to get back into things. It's going to take them a few seconds to actually bring it together now. So Igor Corpse stuck in no man's land. Either he gets onto the wheel of Gavin Dempster and becomes the out-and-out -out race favorite to take the sprint, or we're going to see the peloton behind them get back in. John Grasso is watching. You picked the perfect timing to tune in, man. Thank you so much for watching. Corpse three seconds back. If we look back to the chasing group, it consists of Wood, Trzinski, Valdemar, Henry, Cernbe. Yeah, this this might be this might be coming back. Looking at this peloton and knowing there's double draft, and we see an arrow power up being popped on the front by Valdemar trying to help his teammate get back into things. 
This should, in theory, come back. Seven seconds on the front. You can see the gap. This is fast. 70 kilometers an hour. Alan Dimsey, the pro triathlete, is in the chat saying, my legs hurt just watching this. Come on now. Everything you've got to try and get back on. 140 viewers right now are watching you go through the sufferment. That is the everything bagel course on Swift. Seven kilometers to go. Gavin Dempster's efforts were brilliant, valiant, but four seconds, three seconds, two seconds, one seconds. Team Poland just using teamwork to the highest essence and bringing it back together. So we have Grubo Compacto, as I know Nathan Garrow would say, at the very front uh, of affairs. But now looking at it, taking stock at who's made it up here. We're looking at pre-race. Oh, oh, I almost messed up. We've got pre-race favorite, Cern Bay. We've got Igor Corps, a sprinter. I mean, some people were saying Gavin Dempster's going to take this. Leandro Mazzinio was saying that Henry is going to take it. This could be amazing. This could be a great race finish as Henry goes off the front. So first, it was the attack of Gavin Dempster, team draft, who's now two seconds off the back. Henry goes off the front again now. Come on. Let's see what draft is going to do as they attack now off the front. Six watts per kilo. Who's going to mark this move? It is the everything man that is Igor Kors. Can he climb? Can he sprint? Can he do the flats? He can do everything. He is your friendly neighborhood Igor Kors. <laughs> now the counterattack from Gavin Dempster. Oh my God, this is this is good. So Gavin Dempster has gone on to the attack. This is, looks like to be the pre-race, uh, the plan from Team Draft to go on the attack uh, repeatedly again and again and again. So if they get caught, the next one goes. So now Dempster is sitting at the front at 5.5 watts per kilo. Once he realizes he's been caught, I think Henry's going to go. In this way, he just forces the pace so high, and that should mean the guys like Sir and Bay and Eagle Corpse get tired. Now 5%, 4%. This is where you want to make your move and try and break it. But unfortunately, there's also two team members of Team Poland, and they'll be doing their best to keep this together as well. So if you are a draft and if you are Team Poland, do you talk? Do you do, 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 you do a bit of like inter-team communication saying, look, let's just try and get a, a rider each in the breakaway, and then they can fight out the win together? Because that's where the point you are right now. Because if you bring it to a sprint... Igor Corpse will destroy you. Cern Bay will come second. So now, with Team Draft and Team Poland, you need to attack. You need to make them do the work. You need to start playing this poker game. You cannot come to a sprint with Cern Bay and Igor Corpse because they've got that high engine power. And I think Gavin and Henry knows this. And so must Team Poland. I mean, Valdemar looks like he's the one working on the front with Trzinski from Team Poland in the back being their pre-race leader. You got about five kilometers to go, four and a half. They've done 488 meters of elevation. This is going to be good. There's an attack off the front. It is Trzinski. He hurt me. He's gone off. Igor Korps, though, is active and ready on everything. He has a keen eye on that right-hand side of the screen. And he's now gone over the top at three watts per kilo. Henry's going in here. Valdemar's trying to get back on. All these searches will hurt. Dave Ranson is saying Cern Bay is playing the smart. So far, he has really done that. Now Henry's going again within, is going into the attack as well. Corpse now, he should be looking to Cern Bay saying, your turn, and he is doing it. It's breaking. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a breakaway on our hands with four kilometers to go. Henry and Wood are on the break. Three seconds. This is draft now. This is draft all in their hand. Team Poland's got to go into the attack now. Team Poland, as we see, Jashik Tarak is in here. Team Poland has to react to this. They have to try and bridge this back. But Valdemar and Trzinski, they've just gone onto the attack. How much do they have left? Let's give them a ride on because Wood and Henry are riding away with this one. It looks set up for Igor Korps and Cern Bay, the Danish national champion of Swift. But four kilometers to go now. Let's take stock. Henry, 4.3 4 watts per kilo. Wood at 4.7. Corpse is now doing the pulling back in the peloton. He realizes he's not going to get any help. He's going to have to attack. He's going to have to attack now because if he just sits in the front and brings this back, it's not going to work. He's either going to have to rely on Team Poland, which looks to be what's happening right now with Valdemar now having refound some energy, bringing it back up to 4 watts per kilo. But with 3.5 kilometers to go, I mean, if this comes back, Gavin Dempster is in a perfect position. Cern Bay is in a perfect position because he's done nothing. Cern Bay is, well, that's mean. Cern Bay has made it to this point. That's a lot. But he's played it cool, played it smart. He hasn't taken the turn on the front. Igor Corpse has been the one closing down the gaps. But is this Cern Bay? Oh, he was out of the saddle for just a second. But sits back in. And Jonah Gravdell says, Corpse had to stick his nose in the wind. And that's where the break happened. And it was. So now... 
playing the cat and mouse game in the front, where first they're working together using the new double draft algorithm, Henry and Wood, this is going to be a move. I mean, Leandro Mazzino, not only can he race his bike, but he's also the messiah of, ro- of swift ro- racing guessing, because he said Henry is going to be up there for the win, and that is what it's looking like today. Speaking of which, we've got draft executives, Mr. Greg Leo and Adam Sermon of the Independence Podcast watching. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in for the very end. We got two and a half kilometers to go. Can Jason do it? Canada versus the UK. I don't think that group behind is going to come back. It's a 12-second gap. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. 130 viewers watching this right now. If you haven't already, please consider clicking a reaction button on this live stream. Please consider saying hi in the chat or predicting who's going to win because this doesn't get much more exciting than this. This is the premier event on Swift Racing, according to me, at least in my opinion. Every Thursday evening, this is the race that matters. And Igor Korps has gone on to the attack with Turjinski just on his back. Sern Bay. This is too little too late. This is Swift Racing. This is what Double Draft has done to Swift Racing. It's made it more tactical, more strategic. This is a breakaway working in Swift. How often do you see that? You never used to see that in Swift. It'd always be a bunch sprint or a solo breakaway rider. But today, we got Jason and Wood on the front we got alan lowe saying dempster for the win nathan saying corpse is going i know he's giving it everything but i think for corpse it's going to be a little too late the only saving grace i can see the only saving grace i can see now is if they start looking at each other but cern bay is going for it now cern bay with thrujinski they're hopping the watts they're starting to panic they can see the kilometers take down two kilometers left now you can see the finish line on the course in the top right hand corner oh thrujinski is going again 6.6 watts per kilo the only way this comes back though is if jason henry and wood start looking at each other and start playing cat and mouse getting ready for the sprint saying i'm not taking another turn you take the win you get on the front but i think they're both they're quality riders they've gotten to this point by pure skill and pure racecraft they won't let that happen because there's a second place guaranteed here i think you make a gentleman's agreement and just ride to the end together whoever takes first takes first whoever takes second takes second but you made it all the way to the end so wood is on the front now doing 5.7 watts per kilo while henry has to be careful now he's still in the draft but just barely in the draft one kilometer to go now i believe or just over one kilometer to go but that doesn't quite look right with the graphic on the top right hand side of the screen with the, how many how, the finish line is there right on swift power it said the uh, one lap was 34 kilometers we'll see when we get to the finish line i think it could be down there on the right yes we are near the finish line. I, just, I do recognize it now i'm just so used to doing the reverse course of the six trap or train so that is my apologies trushinsky's at the back taking another turn igor corpse these are really the big I was going to be mean, but the big losers of tonight, they missed that move. They'll be kicking themselves. When they rewatch the broadcast, they will know they missed the deciding move. That's really when they should have gone for it. They can see the banners. They know they come down here, and I, do the t- I believe they take a right, left, and then another right to the sprint finish. So, in the chat right now, Henry versus Wood, the sprint finish. Who's got an error power up? Who's ready for it? I want your prediction. Scratch every other prediction. No other prediction no longer matters, except for Leandro Messino because he predicted Henry. But no other prediction matters. I want you in the chat right now to give a prediction. Who's going to win? Wood or Henry? It's a 50 50 chance. So get your name in the ballot. And whoever wins, I'll give, I'll give a shout out. I'll give a shout out at the very end to everyone who predicted correctly. Quinta Molinese is Henry. Good guess. We got Mason Butler, <laughs> who's in the race, saying draft. So he's saying Henry. You want to says big move can close 20 seconds. Time running out. Yeah, time is definitely ticking out now. Now you can see the finish line up there. This is about 700 meters to go now. 700 meters to go. 500 meters to go. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. That was your last chance. 500 meters from the squirrel scu- no, sculpture is what's being set by Stuart Lynn. That, and then we can see the finish. Wood is on the front at 6.7. Henry's at 4. They're going to have to take a left-hand turn here. Who's going to go for it? Henry Wood. There's a draft power being popped by Wood. No one is sprinting dust just yet. Oh, who's going to go? Who's going to be? They go at the same time. Henry at 12 watts per kilo. Wood at 10, 13, 14, 10. It is going to be Mr. Draft Henry. And then further back, it's going to be Igor Corpse leading out the attack. But Gavin Dempster's in his wheel. It's going to be the Aero Power Up taking third place. Gavin Dempster taking fourth. And the Danish national champion taking fifth with the Polish Riders rounding out sixth and seventh. 
What a race. Now I know where the finish is. That's amazing. Let's do that all again next Thursday. So shout out to everyone who said Henry in the chat, Quinta Mornes, Mason Butler. We've got it with Alan Loaf, with Adam Silverman, Greg Leo, Jasper Fulford. We've also got Neil Austinfield, Matt Gardner, Dave Ranson, Alan Hugiel. We've also got in there Oivin Birchall Tangvik, Lert Oriviv, Alberta, Alberto Utida. Oh my God, there are so many riders to give. So much fun. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name has been Jess Branker. I've been your host tonight. Thank you so much for your love and all your nice words. I'll see you guys on Tuesday for the Swift Riders Journey.